Resolving Inclined Forces. Hello everyone, and welcome back to our channel. Today, we will learn how to resolve inclined forces. Why do we need to resolve inclined forces? Before we dive into the process, let's understand why resolving inclined forces is necessary. In engineering, whenever multiple forces are acting on a body or system, we need to determine the resultant force. This resultant force shows us the combined effect of all the forces and the direction in which they will move the body. By understanding the resultant force, we can apply an equal and opposite force, known as a counterforce, to keep the system stable. This is crucial in designing and analyzing structures, machinery, and various mechanical systems to ensure they function safely and effectively. Why can't we add forces directly? You might wonder why we can't simply add forces acting on a body directly. The reason is that forces are vector quantities, which means they have both magnitude and direction. To add multiple forces correctly, we need to consider both these aspects. Suppose two forces are acting in different directions. If we add these forces directly without considering their directions, the resulting force would be incorrect. When one force acts opposite to another, they oppose each other, and the stronger force will determine the direction of the resultant force. Adding forces acting vertically and horizontally is straightforward. We consider the xy plane, where forces acting to the right are positive, and those to the left are negative. Similarly, forces acting upward are positive, and those acting downward are negative. This convention remains consistent regardless of the placement of the forces as long as they are in vertical or horizontal directions. However, if a force acts in a random direction on this plane, we need to resolve it. Resolving a force means breaking it down into its vertical and horizontal components. For instance, if a 10 newton force acts at an angle, we find out how much of that 10 newtons acts vertically and how much acts horizontally. Let's understand this with an example. Imagine there is a square on this plane. If a force acts at a point on the square in a specific direction, it will cause the square to move in that direction. The same effect can be created with two forces, one acting from the left, moving the square horizontally, and another acting from the bottom, moving it vertically. Together, these two forces will cause the square to move in the same direction as the original single force. In this scenario, the two forces acting from the left and bottom are the components of the original force. Therefore, Whenever we want to add two different inclined forces, we first resolve them into their horizontal and vertical components. Once resolved, we can easily add the corresponding components together to find the resultant force. Let's start with resolving a single force. Suppose a 20 kN force is acting at a 40 degree inclination as shown. To resolve the force into its components, we need two pieces of information, the magnitude of the force, which is 20 kN in this case, and the direction of the force, which is a 40 degree inclination with the horizontal. With this information, we can easily find the components of the force. To find the horizontal component of the force, we multiply force F with cosine theta. This is the general form. Here, theta is the angle made by the force with the horizontal. Therefore, the horizontal component of the force, which we denote as Fx, will be equal to 20 times the cosine of 40 degrees. After calculating, we get 15.32 kilonewtons. Next, to find the vertical component, we multiply the force F with the sine of the angle theta. Therefore, to find the vertical component, which is Fy, we multiply force F with the sine of 40 degrees. After calculating, we will get 12.86 kN. There we have it. Horizontal component Fx is equal to 15.32 kN, and the vertical component Fy is equal to 12.86 kN. Key points to remember here. If the force makes an angle with the horizontal, to find the horizontal component, we multiply that force with the cosine of the angle made. For example, consider another situation. If instead of a 40 degree angle with the horizontal, we had a 50 degree angle with the vertical. These two figures are exactly the same. In this case, to find the horizontal component of the force, we have to multiply force F with the sine of the angle 50 degrees. 
On the other hand, to find the vertical component of the force, we multiply force F with the cosine of angle 50 degrees. In both examples, we will get the final values of the horizontal and vertical components to be the same. Therefore, it's very important to see where the angle is provided. Based on that, we should decide whether to multiply the force with cosine or sine to get the required component. I hope this clarifies when we should use cosine and when we should use sine. Next, we will take a complex example to enhance our understanding. We're looking at a concurrent force system. In a concurrent force system, the lines of action of all the forces intersect at a single point. In this scenario, we can observe various forces acting through a single point. For such problems, we typically need to determine three things, the resultant force, the direction of the resultant force, and the position of the resultant force. Let's start resolving. To fund the resultant force, we need to get the summation of horizontal forces in this system and the summation of vertical forces. We can see this 30 Newton force is acting horizontally, therefore there is no vertical component for this force. Similarly, this 50 Newton force is acting in vertical direction, therefore there is no horizontal component in this force. Apart from these two forces, we have these three inclined forces. These inclined forces have vertical and horizontal components. Let's mark these two components for each of the forces. Consider this 80 Newton force. We can see this force is acting away from the center point. Therefore, the vertical and horizontal components of this force also act away from the center. Next, this 50 Newton force. We can see it is acting towards the center. Therefore, the components of this force also act towards the center. And this 120 Newton force. This force is acting away from the center. So therefore, its components will also act away from the center, as shown. Therefore, we have all the component forces marked. Now let's calculate the forces for each component. Consider this 80 Newton force, its horizontal component will be 80 cosine 30 degrees. The vertical component will be 80 sine 30 degrees. If the angle made by the force is a long horizontal component, then horizontal component is given as force that is 80 Newton multiplied by cosine of angle made. In this case, the angle made is 30 degree. Next, consider this 50 Newton force. The angle made by the force with the horizontal component is 60 degrees. Therefore, the horizontal component is given as a force that is 50 Newton multiplied by a cosine of 60 degrees. The vertical component is given by 50 Newton multiplied by a sine of 60 degrees. In the end, Consider this 120 Newton force. Horizontal component is given by 120 Newton multiplied by cosine of 65 degrees. And the vertical force is given by 120 Newton multiplied by a sine of 65 degrees. Therefore, we have all the vertical and the horizontal forces. Now, we need to do the summation of all the horizontal forces and the vertical forces. Let's do the summation of horizontal forces. While summing up the horizontal forces, we consider all the forces acting to the right as positive and all the forces acting to the left as negative. We can see that this 30 Newton's force is acting to the right. Next, this 80 cosine 30 degrees is acting to the right, this 50 cosine 60 degrees is acting to the right, and this 120 cosine 65 degrees is acting to the left, so this force will have a negative sign. When we calculate these forces, we get these values. The summation of all these forces will be equal to 73.57 newtons. Next, we will do the summation of vertical forces. While summing up the vertical forces, we consider all the forces acting upward as positive and all the forces acting downward as negative. Therefore, we have this force, 80 sine 30 degrees, acting in the upward direction as positive. Next, this force, 50 sine 60 degrees, is acting in the downward direction as negative. Next, this 120 sine 65 degrees is acting in a downward direction as negative, and this 50 Newton's force is acting in the upward direction as positive. When we solve for these forces, we get these values. The summation of all these forces will be minus 62.05 Newtons. Therefore, we have the summation of horizontal and vertical forces. 
with this, we can find the resultant force of the system. The resultant force is given by r equal to square root of summation of horizontal forces square plus summation of vertical forces square. Here, substitute the values of the summation of horizontal forces, which is 73.57 square, plus the summation of vertical forces, which is negative 62.05 square. The resultant force will be 96.24 newtons. Next, we will find the direction of the resultant force. The direction, in other words, the angle made by the resultant force, theta, is given by the tan inverse of the absolute value of the summation of vertical forces divided by the summation of horizontal forces. Substitute the values of the summation of vertical forces, which is 62.05, divided by the summation of horizontal forces, which is 73.57. After solving, we get the angle theta equal to 40.14 degrees. Next, we need to show the position of the resultant force. The position of the resultant force depends on the direction of the summation of the horizontal and vertical forces. In our case, the summation of horizontal forces is positive 73.57 newtons. Here, positive means the direction of the horizontal force is to the right side. Similarly, the summation of vertical forces is negative 62.05 newtons. The negative sign shows the net force acting towards the downward side. Therefore, if we consider a point, our summation of horizontal force is acting to the right from this point, and our summation of vertical force is acting downward from this point. By joining the endpoints of the forces, we can create a rectangle. Here, our resultant force will act like this, making an angle of 40.14 degrees. Remember, the length of these horizontal and vertical forces should be approximately proportional to their magnitudes. Therefore, we have the position of the resultant force. According to this, our resultant force is in the fourth quadrant. I hope this video helps you understand how to resolve forces into their components, find the resultant force, and determine its direction and position. If you like this video, click on the like button, and if you are new to my channel ADTW Study, click on the subscribe button to get all my latest videos.